Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Good to be back in the house of God today again after a wonderful Shabbat last week and a wonderful Shabbat so far this uh, day that we have declared as the Shabbat. Shabbaton, a Shabbat of complete rest to the Lord. How many are entering into his rest and feel his presence from the worship, from the words that were spoken so far? But well, we're going to get into the word of God today, right into our message, and we're looking at Parshat Bechalotacha. And I hope that all of you had a wonderful time getting your six days of manna and looking at the Torah portion for this uh, Shabbat. And on the back of your outline, you can look at next week's portion. I have another week of devotion for you to have a wonderful devotion in the morning with yourself, your family, friends, co-workers, have a, a wonderful prayer focus supporting verses to help you kind of study out those concepts and I hope that is a great help to you as a resource. So we've been doing a new uh, type of presentation of our message and we've been doing 10, 10, 10. How many ready for your first 10? All right, we're almost ready. So let's take a look um, at our reading for today as we look at a message called by my spirit says the Lord and uh, Bimid bar numbers 8 1 through 12 16 we heard Zechariah Zechariah 2 14 through 4 7 and then 1st Corinthians 10 6 through 13 we say Bruchim Habaim to all of our first-time guests and friends and family that have returned this week glad you have come so let's get ready to look at our first 10, 10 minutes of the Torah, our Mosaic instruction. And are you ready for it? Yes. Oh, I said, are you ready for it? Yes. All right, let's look at Numbers 8.1. Adonai said to Moshe, tell Aharon, when you set up, literally mount up or go up, uh, the lamps, in the seven lamps are in the, to cast their light forward in front of the menorah. Notice that the seven lamps cast their light forward towards the menorah, which the rabbis believe is toward the center uh, of the menorah. And verse 8 says, Aaron did this. He lit the lamps so as to give light in front of the menorah. What's the purpose? To give what? Light. light in front of the menorah. So the menorah is to give light. As Adonai has ordered Moshe, here is how the menorah was made. It was hammered out with its base to its flowers, hammered work. Following the pattern Adonai had shown Moshe, this is how he made the menorah. Now, if you really want to understand the menorah, you have to go back to the book of Exodus and see the full blueprint of how it was made. We know it had a central vine with six branches, three on one side, three on the other. Three is the number of unity. Six is the number of man. Seven would show completion. The extra to the six is one, and that shows oneness or unity. And so when there's a oneness or unity of Yeshua being Messiah, believing Jews like three branches in unity on one side and engrafted in Gentiles like believing Gentiles on the other side, make one new man in Messiah or a congregation symbolized in Revelation by a menorah. Okay. So we can see all those beautiful numbers together to represent the beauty that should be in a congregation. I gave you for your days of manna, some themes. And we looked at the theme of illumination. Somebody say illumination. illumination. This is enlightenment, and it is fulfilled in what's called seven spirits of God in the book of Revelation. We sometimes call the Holy Spirit's ministry the sevenfold spirit of God, or the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit. You can find that in Isaiah 11, 1, 2. And then we gave you Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 as a focus of one of the lamps that we would call the spirit of wisdom, a ministry of the Holy Spirit. His title would be the spirit of wisdom that enlightens the eyes of your understanding, which is also another ministry of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom and understanding work together. So uh, verse 5 of Numbers 8 says, Adonai said to Moshe, take the Leviim, the Levites, among the people <clears throat> of Israel and cleanse them. Say cleanse them. Yes. Here is how you are to cleanse them. Sprinkle the purification water. This is the water with the ashes of the red heifer. Uh, it says, sprinkle it on them. Have them shave their whole body with a razor and have them wash their clothes and cleanse themselves. So your clothes have to be clean and your body has to be clean and your body has to be shaved. Why do you think this would be? Why would he tell them to shave their bodies? What happens with hair? in closed in places in the desert. You sweat. 
And so to keep clean before God and to not sweat while working, they would make sure that they shaved all the excess hair off and they would wear this special clothing, which the linen garments would actually stay very cool, like the linen people wear in Miami, white linen. It's not just popular among those in Miami. It's popular among the Levites to make sure they stay cool, calm, and collected. Amen? I mean, no, that's the way we should be, cool, calm, and collected. But we said the theme is not so much about perspiration, but it is more about purification. Purification is seen as a cleansing, a removal of impurities, and we gave you Psalms 51 to have a clean heart and a right spirit. How many know if you don't have a clean heart and a right spirit, it's like your garments are stained with dung? That's when one version says, Joshua the high priest and Zechariah, his, his, stain, his, his clothing was stained with dung. I mean, that's the worst stain ever, because not only does it stain, it smells. And so you don't want to get uh, uh, stained with impurities. You want to keep your heart clean. So there's a picture there that purification on the outside is a picture of the cleansing on the inside. As we go on to verse uh, 1 of chapter 9, Adonai spoke to Moshe in, in the Sinai desert in the first month. It says, after the second... Um, first month of the second year after they had left the land of Egypt. Where did they leave? Egypt. They left Egypt. Now this is interesting. It says they left Egypt and it says he said let the people of Israel observe what? Pesach. Passover as it's, it, at its designated time. Verse 3 says on the 14th day of the first month at dusk you shall observe it. It is a designated time, a holy time, a holy convocation. You are to observe it according to all its regulations and rules. Moshe told the people of Israel to what? Serve so is Passover for Israel? Yes. 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 But what was Israel commanded to do? Let your neighbor come and take a part of it. We call that an Aramaic Ushpizim. Look at chapter 11, uh, verse 24. It says, Moshe went out and told the people what Adonai had said. Then he collected 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Adonai came down in the cloud and spoke to him, took some of the spirit that was on him, and he put it on the 70 elders. Reminds me of Elijah and Elisha, right? When the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied, but not, uh, but not afterwards. So here was this moment of a prophetic gifting that, that there was a prophecy uh, that came forth from these 70 elders. And the same prophetic anointing that was on Moshe had to be upon the elders. Amen? Amen. Do you understand the same anointing that was on Yeshua had to be on his disciples? Mm -hmm. The same anointing on Elijah had to come on Elisha? The same anointing that was on Moses had to come on Joshua and on the elders. So if we take a look at verse 26, it says, There were two men who stayed in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Midad. And the Spirit came to rest on them. They were among those listed to go out to the tent, but they did, but hadn't done so. And they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moshe, Eldad and Midad are prophesying in the camp. <laughs> Verse 28 says, Yehoshua, that's Joshua, the son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moshe's assistant from youth, that means he had a full bar mitzvah training, if you will, answered my Lord Moshe, stop them. And Moshe replied, are you so zealous to protect me? I wish all of Adonai's people were prophets. I wish Adonai would put his spirit on all of them. Amen. Wait a minute. The anointing of the Holy Spirit comes on the prophet, the priest, and the king. But he also has to come on the elders. Come on, elders. You need the same anointing on, my, on your life that I have to have on my life that Yeshua had on his life and his disciples had on their lives. And we also see that the same spirit that came upon those who assembled also came upon those that were still back at their tent. How many know even though you refuse to come to the house of God, the Holy Spirit's going to get you? He's just going to come upon you and the blessings of God are going to overtake you. 
and it was so amazing that they didn't want to go, but they got the Spirit anyway. I think the anointing was so strong on those elders that came. It's just like they probably were praying, like, why aren't me, Dad, and Eldad there? All of a sudden, the anointing that we pray here hits your home, hits your family, hits your boss, hits your co-worker, because there is no distance in prayer. Amen. And there is no distance in the Spirit. And that is a beautiful thing. God wants all of his people to have that prophetic anointing on their lives. Amen? Amen. All right. That was 10 minutes of Torah. Isn't that pretty good? I did it. You ready for 10 minutes of the prophets? Yes. Oh, you're not ready. Yes. All right. You ready? Yes. 10 minutes of the Haftarah as a prophetic precept. Look, we'll look at Zechariah 12, 3, 3. It says, Yehoshua, or Joshua, was clothed in garments covered with dung. Stained garments, soiled. That means soiled with not so pretty stuff. And he was standing before the angel who said to those standing in front of him, Take those filthy garments off of him. Then, he, then to him he said, See, I am taking your guilt away. I will clothe you with fine robes. This was so beautiful. The high priest had stained garments. Instead of pointing out the stained garments, they replaced them. You see, when a leader has a stain, you don't point it out. You don't talk about it like that commercial where the stains talk. You actually change their robes. You say, you know what? I got clean robes for you. What if we didn't treat leaders like that? Point out people's stains. Instead, we change their robes. Because love covers a multitude of sin. Amen. I mean, the Holy Spirit is not trying to point out sin more than he's trying to remove sin from our life. Right. Sometimes we think we're more anointed to point out someone's sin. You're actually more anointed when you cover their sin. Right. Because when they took off the stain and covered their naked bodies, there was purification kept. And the illumination leads to purification. I think each one of us need that power in our life. Uh, if we look at verse number... 8, it says, it says, listen, Kohen Hagadol, Yehoshua, both you and your colleagues seated here before you, because these men are a sign that I am going to bring my servant, who? Samach. This is the Hebrew term for branch. This is the Messiah called the branch. Chapter 4, verse 1 goes on. So here we have a reference to the Messiah coming. It says, then the angel that had been speaking with me returned and roused me as if he were waking someone up from being asleep. Don't you wish that Messiah would wake up the sleeping body of Messiah? Amen. The head wants his body to be awake. Yep. Oh, you didn't catch that. <laughs> Yehoshua, yeah. Joshua the high priest, is like Yehoshua, the apprentice to Moses. Right. So here you have two types and shadows of Yeshua the branch. Yep. Yeah. The prophet like unto me that came after me, that's Joshua. And the high priest that will stand in the holy place. That's also a picture of Yeshua, the way Joshua is a picture of Yeshua. How interesting that we have this sign or this symbol of this. Now, look at this. It says in verse 2, he says, And ask me, what do you see? And I answered, I've been looking at a menorah. Wow. I've been looking at a menorah. Now, if you know anything about the coat of arms of Israel, what is Israel's symbol? The menorah. The menorah. Because in Zechariah, God says, Israel is like a menorah. Yes. Central vine is the Messiah. Six branches is mankind. Three on one side, three on the other. Mixed multitude. Yes. Engrafted in branches. Now, I've been looking at a menorah, all of its gold, with its bowls, at its top, seven lamps on it. How many lamps? Seven. seven. So what did the Torah say? How many lamps for the menorah? Seven. What's the prophet now saying? Seven. seven. Is there any dif difference between what the prophet said and what the, uh, um, what the Torah said? No. That's exactly how we should read the Brit Hadashah. Right. We should read it the same way. That there is no distance. Or there is no difference. Or there is no... The same Holy Spirit that gave us the Torah is the same Holy Spirit that gave us the prophets. And it's the same Holy Spirit that gave us the writings and the new covenant, the Brit Hadashah. Amen. So we shouldn't expect anything different, should we? Yep. So we go from... Uh, looking at this concept of seven lamps on it, seven tubes leading to the lamps on the top, goes on in verse. Um, oh, I see there was a slide out of place. Um, I'll just skip that for now. Uh, let me just jump uh, go, jump over to verse six. Actually, it wasn't a slide out of place, was it? Well, let, let's just go to verse uh, six because the the meat of it. 
be the rest on your own. Verse 6 says, Then he answered me, Is this the word Adonai, uh, is, this is the word of Adonai to Zerubbabel? Not by force or might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, Adonai Sebaot. Look at verse 10. So these seven are the eyes of Adonai that range about over all the earth. Amen. These eyes of the Lord go throughout the whole earth. Where do they go? Throughout the whole earth. In other words, if we put these two concepts together, we have illumination and purification together. Just like Isaiah 11, 1, 2, and Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 give us the illumination, but the purpose of the Spirit's illumination is to bring purification. Because only in the, the light of the menorah will you see the stains. Okay, you didn't catch that. Maybe next week I'll try it again. <laughs> only in the light of the menorah will you see your stains. So when there's illumination, you can have proper purification. Because in the darkness, nobody sees their stain. Wow. Not even the high priest. Not even the rabbi. Not even the pastor. Not even the president. It's not until we come into the light and allow the light of the Torah and the scriptures to reveal to us our stain do we see our stain. Let's look at the law of Hillel that we looked at last week and rehearse it, Gezerah Shabbat, where there's an equivalence of expressions and analogies made between two separate texts on the basis of a similar phrase. Watch this. It says, a similar phrase, a word or a root, where the same words are applied to two separate cases, it follows that the same considerations apply to both. So let's use that. Let's see if we can see the same wording as we just saw that, that Numbers is really rehearsing what Exodus said, and we see that Zechariah is basing his revelation on what Exodus and Numbers said about the menorah. Let's take a look at Isaiah 11, 1 and verse 2. Yeshayahu, or Isaiah 11, 1 says, And there came forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. The stem of Jesse would be David. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Speaking of David's roots. Because we go from a stem to then um, a branch coming from its roots. So basically the branch is coming from this little shoot off. You see when a tree gets cut down, the tree can regrow again. There's little, little stems that come out, these little branches that shoot out. And eventually that branch can become a whole tree. Um, if it, the tree is pruned right, it will regrow again even if the tree was cut down. And so verse 2 says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the branch, who is the root of David. The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him and shall the um, Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So if you take a look at Pardes, we looked at last week this Hebraic Aramaic word Pardes is spelled in Hebrew um, without vowels as in English P R D S or Pe Reish Dalit and Samit. This word pardes refers to a park, an orchard, or a garden, like the Garden of Eden. The word pardes is used as an acronym for four levels of understanding. Take the P, which is pe, and, and we see it's an acronym for peshat. Say peshat. Peshat. Simple reading of the text. Amen. The next is the letter R, which is the letter resh in Hebrew, and it can spell as an acronym, it, it's going to spell out remez which means a hint, and that refers to an alluded meaning to read between the lines. Mm -hmm. The D or the Dalit in Hebrew is the drosh in the acronym, and it means to search. Somebody say search. search. That means for search for a drawn out meaning, which is a homiletical interpretive meaning. And then the last one is sod. And that is from the S or the Samic in Hebrew. Sod spells, uh, is spelled uh, with that letter Samic. It means secret. It refers to a mystical meaning or some metaphoric symbolic interpretation. Okay? So everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Now, I got a whole minute left. Yep. Present. <laughs> we s said that previously in Exodus, we saw the construction of the menorah. Full detail. We know that Levit Leviticus gives us the sacrificial uh, offerings and how there had to be a certain way that they were followed. We get to numbers. We get the actual full journey. This is where the journey after they leave Sinai gets fulfilled. The problem with all of this is, if we disconnect the Torah from the prophets, we won't see the connection between them, 
and we won't see the revelation that they're wanting to give us. So we have to do the same thing with the Brit Shah. Right. We have to go from the Torah to the prophets to the writings. Mm. And so if we go from this concept of taking what we see in the Torah, what we see in the prophets, say there's either a, a simple reading of the text, something hinted or alluded to, we either have to search out some homiletical meaning, or there might even be a secret mystical meaning that something is symbolic of something metaphorically. That takes us to 10 minutes of the Brit Shah. Can you believe we're already there? Yes. Okay. We've just done 20 minutes so far. How many think you can do this at home? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the purpose. 10, 10, 10. You can even do 10 in the morning, 10 in the afternoon, 10 in the evening. You can do it any way you want, right? So as we, as we look at some apostolic writings, we have to go to the main apostle, who was a Pharisee with the most Jewish learning. And that would have been Paul, the apostle, Saul of Tarsus. In 1 Corinthians 10, he rehearses all of the Jewish history, starting from the Exodus from Egypt. For instance, if we back up from what we read today, let's go to verse 1. For I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren and sisters, that our fathers, our forefathers, going back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but more specifically, the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes that left Egypt. 70 went in, 2 million plus came out. So he says that our fathers were under the what? Cloud. And all passed through the sea. Guess what's in our Torah portion this week? Cloud by day, fire by night. So these are manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit shines light. The Holy Spirit purifies our hearts, gives us a clean heart. Take not thy spirit from me, David said. Give me a, a clean heart and a right spirit. And now not only is the Holy Spirit not only illuminating us and purifying us, now there is a concept of the manifestation of the Spirit coming upon us. Cloud by day, fire by night. This is the Spirit. Look what it says. They all passed through the sea, and that was at Passover. Remember what the Torah portion told us to do? Make sure that Israel does what? Observes Passover. Never forget where I took you out, where I brought you from. Look what it says. It says, verse 2, they were all immersed, your version might say baptized, into Moses in the cloud and the sea. Wait a minute. The same manifestation of the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Cloud by day, fire by night. It says they were baptized in the cloud and the sea. Now what, what you might not understand is that they're going through the Sea of Reeds, or known as the Red Sea, a.k.a. And there's water. So you have a picture of water baptism, but because they're being baptized under the cloud, and in the sea, you also have a picture of the baptism of the Holy Spirit coming upon them. Because I wish all my people were prophets. I wish all my people had the anointing. I wish all my people that saw the fire, that heard the thunder, that uh, saw the lightning, they would know that the same spirit that's on Moses and Joshua and the elders should come upon them. Amen. That's what I want. I want them all immersed in the spirit. Remember what we talked about last week? We need to immerse people in the Spirit, like the four uh, levels of the priesthood. Now watch. It says in verse 3, And all ate the same spiritual food. That's the manna. And all drank the same spiritual drink. Or one version says, drink from the Spirit, or uh, referring to the water from the rock. Remember the water from the rock is living water? So that's another manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Living water, the Spirit flowing out of you. Because the Spirit cleanses or purifies Pure water purifies. When you drink clean water, purifies your body. It flushes out toxins. The water of the Holy Spirit flushes out the impurities of the world. Not only to wash the outside of the body, but to be able to wash the inner parts of the man. That's why David said, wash me clean. Sprinkle me, he said. Remember they would sprinkle them with the water of purification? That's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Once again. Now, Beyond the Holy Spirit, look what the revelation of the Holy Spirit is. They all drink, were drinking from the same spiritual rock, which followed them, and that rock was metaphorically who? Sod. The fourth letter, fourth level of looking at Scripture is sod, which means a secret. Meaning the rabbi said there's a sod in the Torah. They said the water from the rock represented not just living water coming from an earthly source, but that rock was a picture of Messiah who was following them. Amen. That's Pharisees. The Pharisees came up with this idea. 
Guess what Paul was? A Pharisee. He was using a rabbinical story from his childhood. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. Watch this. Now these things happened as a what? Example for us. So that we wouldn't create evil things just as they did. Now this is the amazing thing about this. The only way to not create evil things as they did is to have deliverance. Mm -hmm. Because it's not good enough to have illumination. It's not even good enough to just have purification. Because you can purify yourself today and be unpure tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Or impure tomorrow. Yeah. The priest did. They purify themselves for consecration. Look at Nadab and Abihu. They defiled God's holy sanctuary by offering up on unauthorized fire. If you touch the dead, you're also defiled. We touch dead things all the time, and we defile ourselves. So it's not good enough to have just illumination from the Spirit, purification of the Spirit. You need deliverance from the Spirit. Yes. Amen. Oh, I got two, one amen and a couple nods. <laughs> what is deliverance? It is the picture of coming out of Egypt. From Egypt through Passover, we get deliverance. We get deliverance from Egypt. That's our biggest problem. You know what I was fighting this morning? Is a pagan way of thinking from a theological perspective from most of those that were hearing me talk about the number echad, mm. one. Mm -hmm. Because if the text mentions two people like male and female becoming one, then two people can come, become one in unity. When the Bible says in Deuteronomy 6, 4, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Oheinu, Adonai Echad, there's only one person mentioned in the text. So it's not referring to unity as it is oneness one one and only one of his kind nobody else like him now this is the beautiful thing it's not that we can't find the father referenced in scripture throughout all of the torah prophets writings new covenant the son and he's a manifestation as the word of god made flesh and the spirit as the spirit of god manifesting god's glory power and presence in our life but you can't force the Trinity into the Shema. Right. It's Meshugana. Because there's not two people mentioned. Right. It says Shema Yisrael Adonai Yuhei Bavhe Eloheinu, our God, Adonai Echad. It doesn't say Elohim for us to erroneously say, well, Elohim is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry. The text is Yudhei Bavhe. Now, Yeshua is the messenger of yud heh -Vav -Heh. He is the messenger of the covenant. He came forth as the son, the manifestation from the father, Abba, the source. So relationship is not like human because God is not a man. We can't make every human relationship of father and son equivocally added or co uh, 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 compared to God because God is not a man. What we need to do is we need to see the revelation of what the Scripture has given us. Like 1 Corinthians 5, 7 through 8 tells us to keep the feast of Passover. Hebrews eleven twenty eight tells us that Moshe inaugurated the feast of Passover through the sprinkling of the blood. Guess what? 1 Peter 1, 19 tells us that Yeshua is the lamb that is really the Passover lamb. Right. That the original lamb that brought him out of Egypt was a picture of. Type and shadow. There's a revelation, a sowed in the text, yep. a hidden mystery. Right. You should be in the lands of mystery because lambs don't take away sin. Not Passover lambs. Right. But a Yom Kippur goat does. Amen. What you might not know in the sowed there, the secret meaning is when John said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he actually was referring to the Lamb of God of Passover becoming the Yom Kippur poor goat who takes away sin because he who knew no sin became sin for us right. the goat represents sin the lamb represents innocence yes. Yes. so the innocent one was called the guilty one mm -hmm. because he took away the guilty stain off of Joshua the high priest the way he took it on the day of atonement in one day they were cleansed like a picture of day of atonement when all the sins taken away as far as I'm concerned Zechariah chapter 3 speaks of the day of atonement as a picture that one day I'll take away the sin. Tell me one day in the Jewish calendar where sin is taken away in a day. Yeah. Only Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. Isn't that Yeshua's fulfillment? Yep. He's the high priest, but he's also the lamb. He's the lamb that became the goat. 
When he became the goat, he took away our sin, not just pass over. Amen. Because he's not just covering up sin anymore. Right. He's taking it away. Wow. Let's see the final revelation in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. It says, one of the elders said to me, don't cry, look, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who is he? The root of David. Where do we find that? Isaiah 11, verse 1. Watch this. Has won the right to open the scroll and, and its seven seals. There's that seven, completion again. Seven seals to this document that is like some covenant that is sealed in heaven. Verse 6 says, When I saw standing there with, uh, with the throne and four living beings or cherubim angels, four living creatures, in the circle of the elders, a lamb that, had, uh, um, that appeared to have been what? Slaughter. Slaughtered or slain. And had seven horns and seven eyes. Now you know that's so. Because that's a mystery. That's a mystical mystery meaning. There's, it doesn't mean he literally a lamb had horns because that would make him a goat. But it's referring to what horns are symbolic of. Horns are symbolic of the animal's power. Eyes are symbolic to his sight, insight, wisdom, or knowledge. So guess what? The eyes of your understanding are going to be in light. So eyes of the Lord. What were the seven lamps of fire? The seven eyes of the Lord. Seeing everything. Amen. Think about Yeshua. He's amidst seven menorahs. And his eyes are burning like fire. In the midst of the seven lamps, which are burning with fire. Showing that he has his eye on the menorah. What does Zechariah say? I have my eye on a menorah. You know what the father is saying? I'm looking at Israel. I have my eye on the menorah. You know what he's saying to the Messianic congregations? I have my eye on the menorahs. All those that are lit with the same messianic anointing of Messiah, he says, my eye is upon you. I'm watching Israel. I'm watching messianic believers. I'm watching Gentile believers that have a revelation of who Messiah is. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, but he's also the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Two different revelations in the same text. If we didn't have our Torah, if we didn't have our prophets, we wouldn't be able to decipher the code. The seven lamps are the seven eyes, which are the seven spirits. Because the sevenfold spirit brings power, and the sevenfold spirit brings wisdom. And that's the names of the seven spirits. The sevenfold spirit of, 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 the, of the Holy Spirit is that he's a spirit of wisdom and understanding. He's the spirit of counsel and might. He's knowledge and the fear of the Lord. But ultimately, he's the spirit of the Lord. Amen. And that menorah, if you actually draw a menorah, three on one side, three on the other, and a center vine for the seven lamps of fire burning, all seven ministries of the Spirit should be burning in this congregation, in Israel, in churches all over America, everyone needs this revelation. Amen. Without the oil of the Spirit, you won't have the fire of the Spirit. Without the fire of the Spirit, you won't have the illumination of the Spirit. Without the illumination of the Spirit, we can't see our stains. And without it, we can't be a bride without spot or wrinkle. We need to be clean as a people, not arguing denominational stuff, but coming together as one. Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah. Pentecostal and Baptist, one in Messiah. Catholic and Lutheran, one in Messiah. We need to all come together. I want to be the rabbi that sits in a group of pastors and leaders and priests from all different denom denominations. And I want to shine the light of, of the menorah of Messiah to the nations so that every denomination can stop being a walled up, boxed up, theological conundrum. Right. Yeah. I want everybody to drop their walls, walls come down, and Messiah be lifted up, because if he is lifted up, like in the menorah, he will draw all men. Jew on one side, Gentile on the other, it doesn't matter. We're all one in the vine. He's the vine, we are the branches. I close with this uh, final part of the verse, uh, oh, actually Ephesians. I actually find a part of the verse where it says, A lamb has been slaughtered, seven horns, seven eyes, which are the sevenfold Spirit of God, sit where? Into all the earth. What does Zachariah say? They are the seven eyes sent forth into all the earth. The Holy Spirit's looking. The eyes of the Lord are looking throughout the whole earth. He's going to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for someone today whose heart is perfect so he can show you his revelation. So he can show you his strength. So he can reveal his power. So he can reveal his understanding. So he can reveal his wisdom. Are you that one that wants that wisdom? Do you want that understanding? Do you want that knowledge, that fear of the Lord? Do you want that reverence of God? This is what we need. 
We need this prayer in our life. Pray it every day that the God of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, the Father of glory, may give you the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, which is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and the revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being, are being enlightened. If we don't have this prayer, we will not understand the Spirit's work. Two things the Spirit does that we should focus on from our Torah portion. Hashem's Spirit enlightens our eyes and He purifies our garments. Aren't you glad today He's enlightened your eyes to some of the stained garments in your life? Oh, yeah. Without it, we won't be a spotless bride. And second, Hashem's Spirit cleanses our hearts as He wants to also anoint our heads. Amen. You stand your feet today. 35 minutes of Torah today. 10, 10, 10 with a five minute conclusion. I want you this week to study this six days of manna and a seventh day final Torah portion. So when you come back, you will come back with a yes and amen in your spirit. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. How many received this message today? Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha Ya'er Adonai p'nav elecha v'hunecha Yisa Adonai p'nav elecha v'yasim lecha Shalom, Amen May the Lord Adonai bless and keep you May the Lord Adonai shine His face towards you and be gracious to you as he gives you a revelation of the favor of God in your life. May he lift up his countenance upon you as the glory and lifter of your head. And may he reveal and establish his peace to you through Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. And reveal to you who Yeshua is. He is Yeshua HaMashiach, the anointed Messiah. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. 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 God bless you today. Shavua Tov. May the Lord bless you and keep you And make His face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you May the Lord grant you His peace Yivarecha Adonai V'yishmerecha Yae Adonai P'navelecha V'hunecha Yisa Adonai P'navelecha V'yasem Lecha Shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you And make His face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you May the Lord grant you His peace Adonai, the Yishmerecha, Yah Adonai, Benavelecha, Vihunecha, Yisa Adonai, Benavelecha, Vayase, Lacha.